Hello YouTube, this is Frugal and by popular demand here I am with the Aerosoft Airbus X Extended. This is the most recent patch of this and the reason I call that out is that this aircraft had a huge number of bugs when it launched. Um, a lot of people said it was okay even with the bugs. I didn't like it. It was it was hell. You know, it wouldn't follow the flight plan. It would do all sorts of weird and crazy stuff. Now it's been patched. It's a heck of a lot better. There are still some bugs and some issues, but overall, it's actually a very nice aircraft. Now, I'm not a big fan of Airbuses. As most of you know, I'm not a big fan of jets in general. I, I did start looking at the NGX and kind of fell in love with it because of the complexity of it. Um, the Airbus in the real world is a highly automated aircraft designed to be quite simple to fly with most everything being handled by computers uh, including on most flights landings um, which doesn't make it a favorite aircraft of mine however once you get into it it is actually very very good it handles like a dream it's very very smooth to fly if you hand fly it it's actually very very nice and it's it's pretty cool to land this manually as well um, Overall, I'm kind of digging it. You can see here the model is pretty damn awesome. It comes with a number of different liveries and a number of different models. That's the Airbus, what, A318, A320, A321. Um, within those, there are different variants. This is the British Airways one, so it's the IAE engines. Um, quite a lot of complexity in here. Not quite PMDG levels of complexity, more kind of quality wings levels of complexity, so it's pretty damn complex but not really study 3,000 pages of manuals complex. Um, I've got some changes as well in this video that you will not have seen before. This is the UK 2000 London Heathrow scenery. We're going to be flying today from London Heathrow to Zurich. I'm also running Ground Services Extreme GSX, which a number of people had recommended I run, so I'm running that. I am also running Ultimate Terrain X. I'm also running, oh my goodness, Ground Environment X. Tons and tons and tons of new add-ons in this one. Ground Services X is actually pretty damn cool. Anyway, let me jump into the cockpit here, show you around. So here's the cockpit. It's a classic Airbus cockpit. It's very, very um, clinical. Quite a lot of detail, but you'll see compared to an NGX, really quite simple to manage. Not that many buttons to be getting on with. It's pretty, very, very, very simple and very logical in, in how it all works. I guess before we get going, let's let's uh, get Ground Services X out here and uh, refuel this aircraft. Now, I'm still very much getting used to this. I am going to make mistakes. Okay, let's get some refueling going. Like so. Now, while that's running up, it's going to complain at me that I need to open some doors in a minute, so I will go ahead and do that. But let's start powering this thing up. Powering one of these up is actually very simple. It's very logical. You basically work from here up, and then across, up, across, up, and across, up, turning off white lights, which are errors or conditions that need to be met. It's quite straightforward. So looking down here, let's go through this all. Uh, rain wipers are off. That's all good. Oxygen supply is all normal. There is no warning lights there. GPWS we don't care about right now. We are, oh, that's my free fueling. I've already refueled. By the way, this comes with a very neat fuel planning app for for the Airbus, which kind of replaces Top Cat and makes things very very simple. I, it's quite nice. Anyway, let's turn on these. Oh, I can't turn on those. I need to put some power into the aircraft first. So battery one and two on. With that up, we will start the APU, like so. We will turn on APU bleed air. Now these buttons are strange. Left click does something, right click does something. Most of the controls in the Airbus in FSX kind of work that way. There's a left and a right click function to pretty much everything. So now we've got some power in here. Let's power this up. Wait for the light to go out. And so on. Actually, those are in the wrong sequence. I should have done that one, that one, and then that one. Now we can start working our way up. So we're going to put the uh, let's put the beacon on. Let's see about signs. Put those on. No smoking, obviously on. Arm the emergency exit lights. Let's continue working up here. Probe and window heat. Uh, yeah, I know what. I'm going to turn that on. Keep on working all the way up here. This is all air conditioning. It's all set to normal and automatic, which I'm very happy with. These lights are quite normal given the state of the aircraft. Fuel pumps, we don't so much turn them on as turn them to automatic and let the aircraft's computers take care of them. So all of them to automatic and we're all good here. Wipers off, not worried about these right now. Not worried about ventilation right now. Flight control, they're not working, so that's great. Now the other cool thing with this, or one of the core cool things with this, is actually down here. 
you got these two displays, and I know they're not called FMCs in the Airbus, so forgive me for calling them that. I am going to call them that. The left-hand one is your navigation. The right-hand one is kind of the FSX controls for this aircraft. It's very awesome. So you can load up aircraft state right here. We're cold and dark right now. You can also control things like the doors. So I'm actually going to open all the doors so that Ground Services X can do its thing, GSX. Like so. Return. Now the other thing you've got here is checklists. They built in checklists into this and they built in a co-pilot and a co-pilot, uh, sorry, a pilot and a co-pilot. So if I turn checklists on, it will start walking down items. If I turn co-pilot on, then my co-pilot will actually do things. So if the pilot is calling out lights, then the co-pilot will turn the lights on. So in that respect, that's kind of the easy button right there. You turn that on and it makes the aircraft very easy and all you need to do is really fly it. Alternately, you can leave all these off and do everything by hand, but that doesn't make much sense at all. So I tend to turn checklists on co-pilot off he'll start walking down the checklist and it's up to me to respond to everything he says I'm gonna keep on working through all this stuff I'm not gonna run this checklist right now just make sure everything here is all set up which it does seem to be parking brake is set okay oh let's turn the auto brake up by the way set that up to max We'll grab a weather briefing shortly. I'll turn all my displays on. Like so. As I said, we are flying London Heathrow to Zurich. I am using real weather for today. So it's going to be cold and bumpy. Which is always fun. So that's all good there. We'll talk about this in a minute. This is very, very important interesting if you're used to Boeing aircraft. This is very very different and very interesting. So everything seems to be set up there. Let's fire up ground services. We would like uh, the catering service to get out here. We would like boarding to get out here. Now if I pop outside you'll see those guys doing their job. Obviously ground services XGSX is not included with the aircraft. It's an optional extra. I just like it a number of you suggested I check it out, so here I am checking it out. You'll see that I start loading in the baggages down here. I hear an engine. I don't see where it's coming from. Where are you? Hmm. I don't know. Oh, there it is. It's down there. So the little trucks will come up, start loading the baggage. Stairs will come up. Gates will come up. Start putting passengers on. Very cool. Okay, so back in here. Let's start running these checklists, and I'll show you how this all works. Okay, let's start with the cockpit preparation check. Batteries. Both on. Electrical power. APU on. Navigation lights. I didn't turn those on. Set on. Engine master. Both off. Engine mode selector. Checked normal. Landing gear lever. Checked. Parking brake. Is on. Flaps. Checked position. Speed brake lever. Set. Trust levers. Idle. Transponder mode. Checked standby. Radio control panel. Is on. You can recall. Oh, we hit the recall button, which I think is that one. Checked. Anti skid. Is on. Flight director. Is on. Emergency lights. Checked and arm. No smoking signs. Is on. Anti ice. Are off. Crowd window heat. Auto. Air condition. Checked. Ventilation panel. Checked. Electric panel. Checked. Fuel pumps. Are on. Hydraulics. Checked. Echo brake pressure. Now, it did this to me a little bit earlier. Aqua brake pressure. I don't know what that is. Like I said, I'm still getting used to this. Let's just look through here very, very briefly and see if there is something to do with the brake lines, brake pressure. I'm not seeing anything. No. Brake pressure. Which isn't a big problem because what we can do is just turn on the autopilot. Uh, sorry, the autopilot, the co-pilot, and get them to deal with that item, which is kind of one of the cool things. When you're still learning this, the aircraft will actually help you. Look. There she goes. Set. 
set. Ground proximity warning system. Are on. Electronic flight control system. Is on. ADIRS. Checked. Emergency <coughs> equipment. Checked. Checklist complete. So they've done on that checklist now. Now they're waiting for me to close the doors before they continue the next checklist. So what we can do is proceed with setting up the uh, flight plan. Now there is not a facility to load in flight plans here. You have to do it all manually yourself. And by the way, I'm missing out on a number of things here. Normally there's a, a hot bar that you can click to access views. I've had to turn that off because when I run on three screens wide, it, it very much screws up. So I've turned that off. But there's a neat view system going on which you can access, which is kind of cool. Now it wants me to close at door three. Not entirely sure which one door three is. I think it's that one. What I will do, just to be sure, so we can continue setting up this aircraft, is just turn them all shut for now. I don't want to close all the doors, that will start the next checklist running. Which we don't really wish to do. I think we got it. Okay, so let's go down here and finish setting this up. So, you can't load in flight plans, you need to set it all up manually by hand which is a bit of a bear so we are flying E G L L to I gotta remember the code L S Z H so L S there's passengers boarding right now there our alternate is let me just look at my flight plan notes here L F S B L F S B we are British Airways, I've forgotten the number, I think it's 712, I think. Hello. Doesn't really matter. Cost index we're using today is cost index of 20, so that's derating the engines, just like in the 737. And we are flying at a flight level of 370, quite a high flight. Now there's a second page that is in it block here which is what you get from the Airbus X fuel planner application when you load up the passengers in the fuel it gives you a number in my case it's 10.7 or 10 yeah 10.781 so 10.7 put that in right there it's gonna calculate everything out for me very good now we can go over here to the flight plan now we need to key all this stuff in manually, so it knows where we are and it knows where we're going to. I've already checked on my EFB and I know we're using runway 9 right, we'll get to that in a second, but I'll probably cut the video here because I need to type a lot of stuff in for this flight plan, but I'll keep talking just in case I don't. So our first point here is Mayfield, let's put that in there. Okay, so we've got our flight plan set up, it wants me to close some doors now, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Flight plan is all set up. Doors closed. What is the next checklist? The next checklist is going to be the before start checklist, so we might as well close all the doors. Do all that one. Do that checklist. And then we can uh, go for clearance and everything else. Let's get rid of this. Get rid of this. Before start checklist. Let's get rid of that as well. Closed and locked. APU. APU on. APU bleed? Is on. External power? Disconnected and off. Cabin signs? Is on. Trust levers? Idle. Parking brake? Is on. Barrel reference? One, zero, one, three. One, zero, one, three. Check. Beacon lights? Is on. Check this complete. Alright, so that checklist is complete now. We go back over to the checklist window here, it's saying now it wants me to choose whether start and push, and then the aircraft has its own oh excuse me, pushback built in or just start. Now I'm just gonna do just start because I want to use the ground services X, GSX pushback, which is very, very cool. But before all that we want to check the weather and we'll file for clearance and everything else. So radar contact time. 
London Heathrow, local ATIS information, Papa, wind scar, visibility, 10 kilometers or more, clouds, view, 5,500, broken, 2, 5,000, temperature, 1, 5, dew point, 5, QNH, 1, 0, 1, 3, landing and departing, runway, 0, 9, left, advice delivery, you have information, Papa. All right, so we're going off runway 09 left, so now we need to put that into the FMC. I know it's not called an FMC, my apologies. Okay, so departure is runway 9 left. We need to choose a SID, so I'm gonna use my trusty EFB for this, which unfortunately you can't see. So departure here, EGL departure, select the SID. We're going runway 9 left. We're going to the south. So that will be the Mayfield 2K SID right there. Let's insert that. Now I'm going to zoom my view out a little bit. London Heathrow, local latest information. Make sure I haven't Papa, broken scar, anything. Visibility, one zero kilometers or more. Clouds, few, five thousand, five hundred, broken, two, five thousand. Temperature, one five. Dew point, five. Q and H, one yeah, zero, good. one three. Landing and departing. Runway, zero nine. Left. Advice yeah, delivery. Have have two Mayfields. Papa. Wonder if I can get rid of one of them without deleting them both. Yeah. So get rid of this disco. Boom. And we're all set. Scroll back up. So we have our SID in there now from runway 9 left out to Mayfield and then following own course after that, own navigation after that. So let's go ahead and get clearance. Delivery, Speedbird 718, ready for clearance to Lima Sierra Zulu Hotel with Papa. Speedbird 718, cleared to Lima Sierra Zulu Hotel via published departure procedures then as filed. Climb to altitude 5,000 feet, squawk 3356, departure frequency 134.97. Okay. Cleared to Lima Sierra Zulu Hotel via published departure procedures then as filed. Climb to altitude 5,000 feet, squawk 3356, departure 134, decimal 9 or 7, Speedbird 718. Speedbird 718, read back correct. Okay, so this is the cool, th this is the cool thing over here. Let me just turn down ATC a little second. You don't have VNAV and LNAV like you have in a 737. You have managed and selected modes. In managed mode, it's kind of like VNAV and LNAV, so it would be managing the speed, managing the altitude. In selected mode, it's more like turning those off and manually selecting a heading or a speed or an altitude. So at the moment, everything is in managed, hence these dots right here. Um, this little magenta here says that it is going to, that is managed speed, it's going to, it wants to achieve 181 fairly soon after departure. And if I click or pull on this, nothing's going to happen right now, but once we're in the air, the color will change here to show whether it's managed or selected. Takes a bit of getting used to, I am still getting used to it. The other big change as well is actually this, the auto throttle. Here's the two throttles down here. Now, there's a FADEX system in place here, in that normally those throttles, you can see they're linked to my throttle quadrant here. If I put it into auto throttle mode, then moving these actually has very little effect on the power of the engines. It's selecting engine modes. So where in the 737 you would advance to say 60% and select take off go around, here you advance these to a detent up here, which is flex or take off. And that's take off power. And then once you're in the air, you retreat it, you retard it to one detent to climb thrust. And that's how you manage the auto thrust levels. It's very weird, takes a bit of getting used to. Anyway, we are good to go now. I'm going to request pushback and departure. Then we will go over to Ground Services X for the pushback. And once we are pushed back, I will start the engines. I'm not going to start the engines while we're pushing because there's a bit of a discontinuity between the sound in the Airbus and the sound in Ground Services X. All right. Ground Speedbird 718 at the ram, ready to push. Speedbird 718, clear to push, start at your discretion, contact ground when you're ready. On 121 decimal 7. Ground on 121 decimal 7, Speedbird 718. Alright, so let's bring up pushback. We're going to go Capsule to the left. Capsule 05 mic, clear to Bristol, maximum 2 tango departure, score 5433, expect Manchester, 124 decimal 2. Hello, Captain. We are ready for bus back. Can I 
Pretty cool, huh? Where is he? Now the cool thing with pushback in this is it follows the taxi lines, so you don't have to guess how far back you want to go. GSX will actually put you in the right place based on the, the markings on the taxiway. Parking brakes released. So now we're actually getting a proper push. You can see the other ground vehicles right there. I think I mentioned this is the UK 2000 Heathrow scenery. It is very intensive on frame rates, which is why things are a little bit laggy. It looks beautiful though. So runway 9 left is actually a very good runway for us because it is right there. So a nice short taxi. I thought I said tail left. Here we go. See, he's going to position us straight on this taxi line, which is how it should be. Should get a hand signal from him fairly soon that we're done. And then we will set the brakes and we can start our startup. And notice this as well. No yoke, but there is a joystick in the wrong place on the left. Takes a bit of getting used to. Brakes are set. So he's going to start dealing with the pins. So in a second, because it's all a uh, fly-by-wire, we need to calibrate the joystick and the rudder pedals in the actual aircraft, which is the, the next set of things that are included in the uh, after startup checklist. All right, so let's start. Let's start up. Flight deck to ground. Go ahead. We have ATC clearance for start and taxi. Please confirm ground equipment and service is clear. Roger. Up is clear. Right is clear. Ground equipment and stairs clear. Doors closed and wheel shocks removed. Start both engines. Clear to start. Is okay. All right, so we're ready to start now. It is telling us here, I think, start engine two, which we will do. So we switch on to the starters and start engine two. Starting engine two. Engine two stabilized. All right, start engine one. Starting number one. Just put the flaps down to one, ready to go.
Now it really is best if you do actually fly this with a joystick, not a yoke. It's it's quite a nice experience. The aircraft is very in smooth. One stabilized. Good start of both engines. All systems are nominal. Thank you for the services. All clear. Signal to the right, please. Roger, good start. All clear signal to the right. Have a good flight. All right, so the engines started. Now he's going to put us in a wait condition, ready for the after start checklist, and then we'll be ready to taxi. Well, contact the ground and taxi. After start checklist. Engine Need to switch that back to normal. Set. Turn the APU off now. Right click. APU master. Right click. Ground spoilers. Should be armed already. Set. Trim. Check zero. Pitch trim. Oops, I didn't set my takeoff pitch. Let me do that. Set. Flight control. Okay, calibrate the joysticks now. Full left. Full right. Neutral. Full up. Full down. Neutral. Rudder. Full left. Full right. Neutral. Flaps one. Anti ice. Are off. Ecam status. Checked. Ecam door page. Oh, need to check the door page. Let me just drop down here and I can show you that in more detail. That's what all these buttons do. They change the Ecam pages here, so doors closed. Checked. Hand signal. Received. So now it's waiting for me to start taxi and I need to get above 10 knots ground speed and then it'll do the taxi checklist. Before we do that, we're just going to make sure all this stuff is turned on. Like so. And we will contact ground. Ground speedbird 718 is with you at the ramp. Request taxi. Speedbird 718. Ground. Taxi holding point. Runway 09 left. QNH 1013. All right. Runway 09 left. QNH 1013. Speedbird 718. Now the Airbus does come with a limited version of FS to Cruise RAAS. Um, which is very cool. It advises you when you're near runways, near taxiways and stuff like that. However, it doesn't work with the latest patch. So you're not going to hear that, unfortunately. All right, brakes off. Let's increase the power here and start taxiing. This thing is very, very nice to taxi. Very, very smooth. Taxiing checklist. Oh, I need to turn those lights on. Set on. Trust levers. As required. Brake checks. Brake Press checked. Pedal. Check zero. Check. Auto brakes. Max. Take off data. Ground Pacifica 1014. Request start up. Pacifica 1014. Ground startup approved. Well, that's telling us we missed something on setting up the FMC. So I will go and deal with that right now. Let's go here to performance. Ah, here we go. It's flaps one takeoff. Sit. Check. Check. Oh, take off config. Sit. Runway zero nine right QNH one zero two zero Pacifica one zero one four. Some six two start to prove temperatures at nine. So I haven't turned on auto throttle yet. Once I get lined up on the runway, I'll turn that on, and then the throttles change. As I said, they're no longer directly connected to the power output. One one eight decimal five. One one eight decimal five. Tower on one one eight decimal five. Speedbird seven one eight. Tower, Speedbird 718, ready for departure. Runway 09 or left. Speedbird 718, roger. Speedbird 718, tower, runway 09 or left. Line up and wait. 
runway zero niner left, roger, speedbird seven one eight. Tax four seven four, line up and wait, runway two seven. All right, so we're going to line up on the runway, at which point I will turn order throttle on. He will go through his final tax and wait for me to advance the throttles to flex or take off. Oops. Need to hurry up. Speedbird 718, winds call, runway 09 left, cleared for takeoff. Cleared for takeoff. Cleared for takeoff, Speedbird 718. Alright, all that's not alarm. Cleared for takeoff, runway 27, the surface wind is southerly at 10 knots. Rapax 762, off the departing F27, uh, runway 27, line up and wait. Before takeoff checklist. Brake temperature? Checked. Brake fans? Are off. Golf, Engine uniform, Lima, Lima, Alpha, Whiskey, Tower, Checked runway normal. zero, niner, left. TA and land. RA, third to zero, niner, left, clear to land. Golf, uniform, Lima, Alpha, Whiskey. Canon 1022, contact London, 182. 182, Canon 11132. Set on. Sliding tables? Stowed. Stowed. Alright, here we go. So now I advance the throttles to flex or takeoff go around. You'll hear some clicks. You'll see annunciators appear down here. Okay, there let's go. go. Take off. FMA check. Power set. Midland 2 Charlie Whiskey, contact London 119 decimal 77. 119 77, Midland 2 Charlie Whiskey. This is a fully loaded A320, so it's going to take quite a bit of runway to get in the air. 100 knots. Checked. B-Bird 676, clear takeoff, 2-7 right, swing calm. Up. Now, still flying manually for now. It is really nice to fly manually. You wouldn't have thought it would be, but it actually really is. Speedbird 676, contact London 118-182. 1882, good day, 676. Alright, let's go on to the autopilot and I can finish setting stuff up. Contact departure one three four decimal niner seven. Over to departure one three four decimal niner seven. Departure Speedbird seven one eight is with you, leaving one thousand eight hundred feet or five thousand feet. Speedbird seven one eight departure radar contact climb flight level one hundred. Flight level one hundred. Climb, flight level 100, speedbird 718. And the radar is driven to the floor, passing 2,000 feet at the two street angle. Ruben, top of 4, 10, below, four climb, up. maintain altitude 3,000 feet on reaching. And there we go. Maintain 3,000 feet on reaching. Ruben, top of 4, turn right, heading 070. Engine mode selector. Right, 707. Uh, 070. 070. Set. It's the Bell 47 Check the track. Here, up, lights off. Check. Both on. Are off. Set. One, zero, one, three. And there we go. Now it's over to the autopilot. Obviously you can fly this manually, but it's a fairly complex SID and I'm still getting used to the aircraft, so hence the no-fly manually. If there is some problems with this, and there are, you notice this. It's kind of got a little bit out of sync there with the flight plan, so it's kind of wobbling around. It does that sometimes, not very often. Flight information, 
Notice thr climb thrust is set here now. So this is all managed. No, this is selected. That's right, selected but managed speed. Hence the magenta diamond here. So it's Bear of reference set cross check. So magenta tends to mean managed, blue means selected. So we have a selected altitude of 10,000. We are managing our speed though, automatically managing our speed through the autopilot. So you see it's keeping the speed down at under 250, that green dot, until we climb above 10,000. Just as you would expect. Some of the initial bugs meant that it didn't do that, so it's good that that's been fixed. Now another neat feature of this is you can actually have this FMC type display uh, on another device. There's a web browser built into this. You can run up the web browser application and then just fire up an iPad or another computer and you can actually program the FMC from that device, which is a very neat idea. There are some things to get used to. You've already seen here on the autopilot panel uh, that things are very, very different compared to a Boeing. Also, you'll notice down here we have comm radios, but we have no nav radios. All the nav stuff is actually done through the FMC as well. And it's down here on rad nav. So you go in there and you tune in your VOR frequencies for uh, nav 1, nav 2, and so on. It's kind of cool. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. In the next video, we will be approaching Zurich and hopefully landing. I'll see you then. Thanks a lot.